Good day, Pastor Jim from the Village Chapel with your daily devotional here. I'm uh, going to read from my utmost for his highest. Oswald Chambers, uh, I bet eight out of ten of you already have this. And uh, I've, pu I've pulled the selection from, uh, uh, the date is August 28th. I don't know what day you're listening to this or watching this. Uh, but uh, he's pulling uh, from Luke chapter 11, verse 1, where the disciples say to Jesus, Lord, teach us to pray. And um, uh, you're familiar, of course, I would think, with uh, the Sermon on the Mount and uh, when Jesus teaches the Lord's Prayer, what we call the Lord's Prayer to his disciples there. Um, here is the Luke, the Luke N version of that same moment, if you will. But they come to him and they, they, they've seen him pray, they've overheard him pray, and boy, what was that like, you know, to hear Jesus communing with his Father, you know, with God the Father? That just, that kind of, the idea of that um, blows my mind. I was always taught as a little kid, you know, you bow your head, you fold, you fold your hands just so, you know, you bow your head and close your eyes. And we used to get in trouble if we opened our eyes, you know, during prayer. But then I, I was so shocked to read in the Gospels on an occasion or two that Jesus lifted up his eyes to the heavens and prayed. And I thought, oh, his prayer didn't count. You know, yes, his prayer did count. That's true. Um, <laughs> Lord, teach us to pray, Luke 11, 1. And Chambers <clears throat> says, it is not part of the life of a natural man to pray. We hear it said that a man will suffer in his life if he does not pray. I question it. Whoa. <laughs> what will suffer is the life of of the Son of God in him, which is nourished not by food, but by prayer. When a man is born from above, the life of the Son of God is born in him. And he can either starve that life or nourish it. Prayer is the way the life of God is nourished. Let's say that again. Prayer is the way the life of God is nourished. Wow, that's, that's amazing. Our ordinary views of prayer are not found in the New Testament. We look upon prayer as a means of getting things for ourselves. The Bible idea of prayer is that we may get to know God himself. And that's so true. Um, I guess, you know, so many of us have been brought up to think of uh, the time to pray is when I need something, or the time to pray every day is when I want to take my list of things to do today to God and give him that list and um, uh, expect that he will tend to it or tend to me. And yet what the Lord so uh, much would like to give to us is himself, which is the real need of my soul, the real need of your soul as well, uh, if we were honest and teachable and open and whole. Uh, thing. Uh, ask and it will be given to you. We grouse before God. We are apologetic or apathetic, but we ask very few things. <laughs> we grouse. We don't use that word very much, do we? You should try to use that word today. Grouse. Try to use it in a sentence with, with somebody. Uh, ask and it will be given to you. We grouse before God. We are apologetic or apathetic, but we ask very few things. Yet what a splendid audacity a childlike, a childlike child has. Ah, now he's interesting. Uh, coming before the Lord in all honesty and being bold in asking is kind of what he's talking about, isn't he? Uh, like a child would just assume that their parent uh, would welcome them coming to them. And that's indeed what parents want. They want their children to come to them. Uh, it doesn't mean they say yes every time. It just means they really want their children to know they can trust that, that as parents, they will love their children. Our Lord says, unless you change and become like little children. Okay, that's important. And that is what Jesus taught us. Uh, not to become childish, but to become childlike in this manner. Ask and God will do, Oswald Chambers says. Give Jesus Christ a chance. Give him elbow room and no man will ever do this unless he is at his wit's end. And that's, he's just making the point that uh, uh, we all seem to wait until 
You know, going to going to God seems to be the last thing we do. Uh, so many of us are. Uh, uh, we think of ourselves as self-sufficient. We think we've got this. We we don't want to bother God with it. He's running the universe, that kind of stuff. And and uh, here he's just saying, why would you wait until the last little bit when you're at your wit's end before you'd go to God? Uh, when a man is at his wit's end, it is not a cowardly thing to pray, to pray. It is the only way he can get into touch with reality. And he has a capital R on reality there because... What he's, what he's really saying is the only way we can really get in touch with God is to commune with him in prayer. Be yourself before God, though he says, and present your problems, the things you know you have come to your wits end over. As long as you are self-sufficient, you do not need to ask God for anything. And that's where prayer really gets at the root of our problem, doesn't it? It helps uh, not only does the if we engage in the physical posture of kneeling or bowing our heads or folding our hands or bowing, those are all signs of submission, and there there were good reasons for those to become part of our practice, if you will, in prayer. Uh, but I want you to know, I'm um, with the Apostle Paul. Pray without ceasing means uh, if if the Apostle Paul, uh, you know, if he, if if he were living in our day and time, he'd be praying as he drives down Interstate 65 or down Interstate 40, and he'd have his eyes wide open the whole time. <laughs> and and he, But he'd be talking to the Lord the whole time, and that's the point, isn't it, that we would be with God, that we would commune with God, not just think of God uh, as if we're consumers and we're going to him for stuff, but we want to be communers that go to him for himself and to be in relationship with him uh, and as long as we're self-sufficiency, we're not going to do that. If we're self-sufficient, if we think we are, and if we're deluded thinking we're self-sufficient, we won't be asking God for anything. Uh, he closes this out uh, with this, these thoughts. Uh, it is not so true that, quote, prayer changes things, end quote, as that prayer changes me, and I change things. That's true. Yeah, he's got that right. God has so constituted things that prayer on the basis of redemption alters the way in which we look at things. Prayer is not a question of altering things externally, but of working wonders in our disposition. And so God does that, doesn't he? And prayer, this one of those spiritual disciplines that we use, they have, you know, uh, all of those spiritual disciplines, there's no power in, in the, you know, the disciplines themselves. The power is that we use these spiritual disciplines to place ourselves before God so that he can transform us and change us. Um, and so if we are, if we are in sorrow and we need comfort, we, prayer is, the, is that vehicle that God has created for us to go before the Lord, uh, to, to, to weep before him, uh, to present our broken hearts to him. And we're reminded uh, through another spiritual discipline of the word of God that that teaches us uh, uh, in Psalm, Psalm 36, I believe it is, that the Lord draws near to the brokenhearted and he saves those who are crushed in spirit. It's so beautiful. Um, and so all of these spiritual disciplines, they don't have any power in and of themselves, but they, we use them to place ourselves before God, uh, that God might transform us and change us. And in some ways, or in some occasions, uh, it's just his comfort. It's just his peace. It's just his presence that we so desperately need. Even though we're thinking it might be all about changing some circumstance or some outcome, um, he knows what we really need. And so we run to him and we crawl up in his lap like his children, his sons, his daughters. Uh, and we just tell him what's on our heart. He loves that when we do that. Uh, let's do that now. Lord, thank you for this day. Uh, and I I myself, Lord, just place myself before you uh, through this prayer and this devotional this morning. And I, I'm, I'm, I'm praying, Lord, that for myself and for my friends here, uh, you'll move in our hearts and minds. And Lord, that we would, as we study your word, we gain, gain a clearer vision of your truth. As we pray, Lord, that we would um, have a, a, a greater confidence in your power. And, um, and Lord, as we uh, draw near to you and you draw near to us, that you'd, you'd give us uh, uh, 
more reassurance about your love for us, that we would walk in the freedom of that, and that we would rest in the security of that as well. Pray this in Jesus' name, our Savior. Amen and amen.